struggles that you hadn't really had as much at home that you get today. Any any ideas why what? That's not what killed us. What killed us is we, we've got a guy pinned on the sideline. We back off of him for some reason. I have no idea why we would do that. He makes a three, and then we leave the guy. We said, don't leave. He steps into another three, and then we have a guy split a trap, which is a no-no. Shoots and goes and gets his own rebound. Tips it in for a three-point play. Goes from four to thirteen. Is it, is it energy level or not understanding what's the problem on that defensive? Okay. I thought our energy was okay at the end of the game. The player said that too. He said they need to have that energy from beginning to end. Well, we need to know where our man is. scouting report when when they're told don't leave somebody then don't leave them when they're told press up on them and make them bounce it they need to press up on them and make them bounce it but they made shots you gotta give them credit they made shots we broke down they made shots when they broke down we didn't make shots we got nothing inside. Bob, what happened on the play before the half where they came back after and took the points away? It's on half one o'clock, I don't know. Okay. Don't ask me those questions. It cost me money. <laughs> <laughs> you want to pay my fine? I work for the newspaper, man. I can barely pay my fine. <laughs> don't ask me those damn questions. <laughs> How do you get them to bounce back? Either way, they got to do it themselves. Well, I mean, you would hope that um, we've got enough fight to us that we we do bounce back. I, I don't know. I, I I have to go back to wow the early days. I think before we got lost four in a row. Most of the time, guys, at least my guys, you know, on a losing streak, they come out like ready to fight. We didn't, we didn't have a lot of fight to us. Maybe it's, you know, maybe it's the, the kind of guys, we are good guys, I keep telling you that. We get really, really, there could be, and they, they do a lot of really good things in the community. Do you have a leader that on the court or during games can kind of seize it and drive guys along with them? If you want to blame a leader, blame me. That's my responsibility. I just, you know, I thought we were okay. We had a good, really good practice on Thursday, probably the best practice we've had in a long, long time. And then, Friday wasn't near as good, but it wasn't terrible. And then, and then we come out today and we did a lot of things out of character too, you know. Some of the shots Derek took, he hasn't taken shots like that. Passes it back out and reestablishes, I think. Sometimes you, you know you press too much. I think he was he was trying to press too much. He was trying to trying to score from the inside for me. But you know you stand there and you watch us miss shot after shot after shot from the perimeter. And you're an inside guy. You say throw it in here. You know. And, you know it was physical down there. 
what happened seen? with Oscar today? It seemed like he got off to a pretty good start, but then it just stopped. I saw or our bench saw him having as good a start as you did. Uh, two minutes to the floor. Could you've obviously tried a lot of different things, whether it be with lineup with this guy here, yeah. pressing a little bit, uh, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Is there really any viable options that you haven't tried yet? Not that I can think of. Okay. And we've tried to play 1-3-1, three, one. we've tried to play 3-2, we've, we've tried to play 1-1-3, one, one, we've, we've tried to play a lot of stuff. We just got to do it better. Right. We just, we just got to, we got to find something that they're a hard, they're a hard matchup, Justin, because Doolittle can play inside now, right? And so now, and then, and Manning, Manning stands out there in a the corner, and then you get guys, you know, particularly our big guys, that, and most big guys, young big guys. That, I mean, they stood under the basket their whole life, and now we're asking them to go out there, and too many times they forget. to guard ball screens every which way imaginable. Um, they started slipping them and, and our guys were supposed to go with them but they didn't go and so you know our coaching staff thought that switching would be the way to go. I've never switched. I never didn't want to switch because I've never done it. But um, I thought, what the heck? I mean, we haven't been able to guard it any other way. It wasn't a very good idea. That was today. We were that was today. We switched everything. But, you know, I mean, the thought was we thought we could front, front do a little on the post or Manning or whomever it was, and we could front them in the post and we could get help from them. <coughs> They shot the ball so well that if they skipped it out of there, you, you couldn't get from from under the basket out to get to them. And I, honestly, he just overpowered us in there. We, I mean, we just couldn't keep him from catching it where he wanted to catch it. Well, but in the end, you've tried, <coughs> but nothing is going to work until you make shots. Fair enough, I mean. Well, that would sure help out. I mean, that would, that would help considerably. But, you know, I, I, when you miss as many shots as we've missed, I mean, we're, God, we're, we're we've got guys, we got guys on our team that are one for their last 27, maybe, something like that. I mean, it gets to you, you know, and, and, and so you, I, I don't think you play as hard defensively. I, I look down our bench, you know, and I mean, we got a whole bunch of guys with their heads down. And if I missed that many, I'd have my head down too. Is there any way you can get those heads perked up and enthusiastic? I don't think, at least before this game, that our enthusiasm wasn't a problem. one thing to go out and stand there with nobody else in the gym and shoot shots and make them and then there is when there's 14,000 people in there and got money to make them. And, and you know, and, and, and guys, let me tell you something. Here's the reality. The reality is we're playing a whole lot of your first year guys. We just played a team that have a whole bunch of veterans that are really good. persevered through more things than what we did and, and then, then it got out of hand. But we just 
still have. You know, Jermaine's a senior, but Jermaine's in his second year here. Chase hasn't played all that much. Chase has been phenomenal for us. I mean, terrific. But we've got, we've got three seniors, and, and, and really, I don't, think we, I don't think we even start a senior. Jermaine, but, but, but Jermaine's a two-year guy. We just don't, they haven't been through this before. You know, and, and, and you're talking about the best guy on their high school team or we wouldn't have recruited him. And you know what they do with the best guy on the high school team, right? They tell him, stay away from everybody, don't foul, we need you on offense. So they never really guard, they never learn how to guard. The thing I was saying, the run with, with the youth that you're dealing with, that experience, run that you guys went on early in the year, November, December, early January, does that make this even more? We made shots, Justin. Right. We made shots. We beat Ohio State and Cleveland. Great win. And we know what we did. We made shots. Deuce made shots. We flattened them out and just said, go play, young fella. They made shots. We haven't made shots like we haven't had anybody make shots like that since. Right. I mean, if you think about it, Justin. I mean, you said we went on that run, but you think about the Nichols game came down to the end. The Akron game came down to the end. How many of those games came right down to the bitter end? Yeah, it was down. Yeah. Why? Because we couldn't make shots, and we made a conscious effort to go recruit guys who could make shots. There's not a college coach in America that would tell you Sean, Sean McNeil's not a, not a really good shooter. Taz is a good shooter. We consciously try to recruit some shooters. For whatever reason, they're not making shots. I mean, as good a shooter as, as Chase is, if you think about it, I mean, he's shooting 58% from, from foul line or something like that. And he's a good shooter. He's worked really, really, really hard at it. Anything else? Coach Rod Thorne, obviously you didn't get to see the ceremony, but uh, I'm sure you guys have had time to talk throughout this season. Any uh, comments about that, having his jersey number retired? That's long overdue. It's long overdue. Don't have it. That's 
that was part of the push for the practice facility to have a place where we actually could honor him. I mean, we got, uh, John Racy was kind enough to, to let us borrow the ball from the NIT champions, our only national championship. It's, you can see it, it's in the, it's in the practice facility. We got the basket from, from the field house in there. We've got the first scoreboard from the field house in there. So, you know, we're trying to, we're, we're trying to do those things, but we need to do a much, much better job. And, and really, you know, because those guys are, we, we've already lost Hot Rod. And, you know, everybody's kind of getting up in age. I mean, when I think about it, I was a little kid, you know, when those guys were playing. Now I'm 66, how old are they? Think about it. I told Rod today, you know, I was, I grew up out there in Doug Hill, and, and I sit on my grandfather's lap and listen to the games. And my mom would always make me take a bath before the game, so I go to bed right after the game. Well, I get so excited, you know, sitting there listening to. At that time, it was it was Rod and his team, and and uh, I want to go get some shots. My grandpa said, "Go ahead, you know, and you go out in the garage." Well, the garage really, the garage was the coal bed. That's where you stored the coal. So I'm out there hoping, you know, at halftime, and I go in there and I'm cold dust head to toe. My mom's pissed off, and my grandpa thinks it's cute, and I get thrown in a tub for, you know, another dousing and go back and listen to the second half with my grandfather. So, you know, I've, I've got, I've got a, an appreciation for what those guys did, certainly for for this university and for this state. And they're powerful guys. When you think about it, you're just not talking about three guys that are in our Hall of Fame. You're talking about three guys that are in the National Basketball Hall of Fame. That's something now. Coach, thank you.